Speak to us, Lord. Amen. This morning there was, in the early service, there was a word and go back to what God was saying to us through the gifts of tongues and interpretation in just a minute, but there's a word that was given to us in the church. I feel like it's maybe for us here in the 11 o'clock too, that it was just simply an assurance that, that I hear you. The Lord would say to us, I hear you. And no matter what the situation of life may be, sometimes we come into worship and we, we convince ourselves that, boy, God couldn't hear me. And our prayers seem to be hitting the ceiling sometimes in our flesh. And God would just said to us, I hear you. And uh, let that be an encouragement. If you're joining with us online, sometimes the, the gifts of the Spirit are in the, in the room here and it's hard to translate online. And for the, some of you may, may not have heard the word, the, the book of Acts, we're going through a series and the story continues. The book of Acts tells us that the, the release of the, the Holy Spirit into the early church, it's still here today. And those gifts through tongues and interpretation, it's good. Hold, hold just for a second. Hold just for a second. Because some of you may not have heard the interpretation of those, those, that message in tongues. And it was simply an assurance that there is still power in the name of Jesus. It's not just, it's not just a words on a, a, the words on a song or a screen. That there is power in that name. That when he died on that cross, he did not just just only purchase forgiveness for our sins. The, the Bible says that in that act that he was purchasing for us, that restoration, healing, when we talk about breakthrough, it's not just an emotional thing. There's a spiritual dynamic that that gift on the cross was a, was a purchase of salvation. And this message and interpretation through tongues was, was, was there to remind us of that. But the book of Acts also says that those signs and wonders and things that in our minds we can't understand as the gifts of the Spirit should be a sign to the unbelievers. And that's what it is today to say the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, through his spirit, would interrupt and take time to speak to you. So you were made in the image of God, and your spirit, I just know, this is how God works, that when the gifts of the spirit are there, there's, we may not be able to explain it, and that's okay, because God's spirit talks to our spirit, and there's something there. So I'm going to just encourage you, if you're here in the room, and you never experienced the gifts of the spirit, it's God's way of saying, hey, I hear you. And I want to connect with you, and I want my spirit to talk to you, your spirit. And so even today, right now, there may be that drawing of the spirit to, to, that, that you just feel like, wow, that, that's God's way of saying to me, speaking directly to me. And I would say to you, yeah, that's what it's all about. He hears you. If you're here today and you've said you never, never accepted Jesus into your heart, today's the day. We can talk about small groups. We're going to do that. And you see, what are these crazy shirts everybody's wearing? What's going on? We'll talk about that later. But the truth of it is, is the, the best small group in the world is you and Jesus. And he wants to say, hey, I want to have a relationship with you. And that's what it's all about. Wow. Wow. We're going to give an opportunity at the end of our service today to connect with you and uh, to pray a prayer together with you. And that's the most important prayer you'll ever make. Uh, but today, I just know right now that God may be working in your hearts. Would you do me a favor? It's not on script where we'll go off, off script a little bit. But would you just bow your heads and close your eyes all over this room? And if you're here today and say, Pastor John, I'd love to pray a prayer with you to ask Jesus into my heart. There's something that's happening in my spirit right now that God's drawing me. And you say, would you just include me in a prayer to ask Jesus into my heart? I'd love to make that decision. 
with you today. If you're here in this room and you would, you would say, hey, include me in that prayer right now, would you just raise your hand and let me see it all over this room? Anybody in this room, just at this moment right here, thank you, over here to my left, thank you so much. Anybody else? You can put it down after I thank you, right here in the front. Anybody else? Thank you in the back, I, I see you. Thank you, sir. Another one in the back, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? It's the best thing you can ever do. Church, all over this room, and you that raised your hand, will you just join your hearts with mine? There's nothing special in the words we say. It's all about the posture of our heart. Church, all over this room, would you do me a favor and and join with those that have just raised your hand? Would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, dear Jesus, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I receive your forgiveness. I I want to live for you from this day forward. Forgive me. Set me free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. At the end, at the end, you know what? Even right now, church, just look at me all over this room. Here's what we're going to model something that's scriptural. The Bible says that when one, the Bible says we're all sinners. And the Bible says when one sinner comes to the, to the Lord, comes it back into the relationship, that the angels rejoice. And so in this room, can we join with the angels rejoicing? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. I thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. You know, cool. we're going to have you be seated in just a minute. Some of you are like, Pastor John, you're dragging this on. No, it's the most important thing in the world we can do. In a minute, at the end of our service, we're going to have people that are going to come forward here, and they're going to be uh, uh, just able to connect with you. Please, if you've just raised your hand, don't let that just be uh, the end. We really mean when we want to we want to do life together with you. There's no, like, we're not going to, you know, bait and switch and like sign you up for anything. No, no, no. We just want to help you in this journey. And so if you'll do us the honor of just allowing us to pray together with you, we'd love to further that connection uh, with you and your your new life and beginning what God is doing in your heart. That's awesome. Amen. Hey, hey, this is an incredible day. You've come at the right Sunday. It's a fun day. And uh, I just, I know you're there. So, hey, turn around, high five someone and shake their hand. Maybe hug a neck as you're seated. And uh, we'll transition here in just a minute. I love all the air fives going around. Awesome. Awesome. If you're joining with us online, welcome. We just are so honored that you take some time out of your day today to worship with us. And I know it's different online behind a screen, but you know what? The presence of God can be with you as well there. Many of you may be doing like watch parties online, and that's great. And the Spirit of God can move and and just minister in that setting the same as it can here. So God bless you as you join us online as well. We're so honored that you would would have uh, us uh, time today. So, wow, it's just been an incredibly full weekend of seeing what God does. And so we're going to jump right into the next little portion of one of the most exciting things that we can do is to continue to worship the Lord in our giving. And we love that. I just love it. I'm saying we, because we're all a part of it. We, we're just a generous people. This past week, we saw how the, the generosity of our giving is having an impact in so many lives here in the triad all over the world. And we do that in several ways as far as giving. We bring to the Lord his tithes, that first 10%, that first fruit. They belong to him. The Bible said, we actually read it a couple weeks ago, will a man rob God? No, we don't want to be in that position. That we say, God, here's the 10%, back to you. Bless the 90, and he does. And out of the abundance of that, we bring our offerings. And what a, just an awesome opportunity that God gives us to say, okay, the Bible actually says, isn't this cool that the Bible says, test me in this. And see if I won't pour open and open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessings upon you. And I'm sitting in a room full of people that have understood that principle at a pretty high way. So we're going to give to the Lord uh, his tithes and bring our offerings. We can do that in the envelopes. So they're on the seat pockets there in front of you. Put those in the buckets on your way out. You can give online at calvarytriad.com slash give. Just FYI, the website looks a little bit different. And so in the next few weeks, you're going to be seeing some, some transition there. In fact, the URL is going to be changing from calvarytriad.com to calvarytriad.church. A lot of reasons why there. Uh, but it may look different, same, same place that the, your gifts are going to. Or you can text to give as well, and you text the amount 
uh, to 84321. Well, you've heard, if you've been around Calvary for any amount of time, this idea of kingdom builders. And when we give, that God uses our gifts to be a blessing to people all over the world. And today, we have a very unique opportunity to celebrate not just a, a, a name on a screen, but faces that we have partnered together with. And let's just be honest, they're part of our family here at Calvary. And we get to hear uh, uh, kind of another step in a journey of God uh, blessing and, and launching into a phase of ministry that we're excited about with Josh and Alina Gordon. And so Pastor Tom, the Gordons are gonna come. Would you do me a favor and just welcome them to this platform today as we honor them and what God is doing in their lives today. Josh and Alina, we love you guys. We're so grateful for you and all that you are just to the world, actually, and to our family here at Calvary as well. Pastor Tom, man, tell us what God's doing in their lives. Is that they're moving there. And uh, these are one of our missionary families that we picked up this year, and we are so honored. They're going to be uh, working with Child Hope, which is the largest Christian sponsored uh, school system, uh, in, not only in Latin America, but you guys are expanding, but there, there's over 300 schools now in 21 nations. And what they do is they're dedicated to the prevention of child abuse, protecting kids at risk from getting involved in gangs, and providing a warm meal and an education to help lift kids out of poverty. And I wanna encourage you guys, you can find out more about their ministry after service, if you stop by the Kingdom Builders Gallery, they've got a table, be happy to share more. But just in our dialogue this week, I asked them, what does a win look like on a Sunday? We've got such a short window. And the response back just impressed me. And I thought, this is where we need to go this morning. So tell me, what, why are you guys feel like you're prepared for this particular mission to help rescue kids? out of poverty, keep them out of gangs, and, and protect them from child abuse. Why do you guys feel like the Lord has positioned you for this? Um, <clears throat> because we're both great stories of redemption and comeback stories. And um, so just quickly about me, um, I was raised in the church, I, um, my, but I lived in a household full of dysfunction and abuse. And at a young age, I walked away from the Lord, bitter and angry. Went down that prodigal son type of road, came back in my 20s, got cleaned up, filled with the Holy Spirit, went off to Bible college, came back out, went through a divorce, life gets messy, and then got bitter at God again, went back to addiction, ended up going through Teen Challenge as a student in 2016, and that was the start of my healing process. 2019, moved here to Calvary, and I just want to thank Calvary this morning for God has used y'all in different ways to continue my healing process. Um, through partnering with Teen Challenge here in the Piedmont, through, you know, great friends who become bro like brothers like F Philip and Bradley. Um, I just say thank you to y'all, and man, we're going to miss y'all so much. Amen. God is so good, church. There have been two constant things in my life over the past decade and a half, and that is God is faithful and Calvary Church, you've been faithful to me. You've walked with me through some really exciting times, like in 2011 when I left to go to Mexico to serve the Lord there. You stood with me when I came home for circumstances outside of my, my control. And then you were here with me when my husband walked away from me in 2016. You were there with me when Josh came into my life in 2019, and thank you for celebrating me, for being with me. You know, you guys and Pastor David always reminded me that the gifts and the callings are irrevocable, and I thank God for that this morning, that we never mess up too much. Life doesn't happen too messy for God to use us. He always wants to use us and use you. Thank you. Well, you guys have got a beautiful story of redemption. And that's what God does with our lives. And then he calls us. He gives us beauty 
or ashes. Anyone else identify with that? And here is our honor today to send you guys as part of our missionary family. And it's exciting because you're fully funded, right? We support you guys on a monthly basis. And so I asked him, I said, what is the greatest thing that Calvary can do for you today? And I'll, you know, well, I'll share this one. Josh. Um, first of all, just continue to partner with Kingdom Builders here, man. Continue to sow into missions. Um, because by you sowing into this body keeps people like us on the field. But two, don't let it, us become out of sight, out of mind. Like we're still an extension of the Calvary family in Costa Rica. So reach out to us on Facebook, social media, drop us a call, a text. My number will stay the same. If you don't have it, come by, get one of our prayer cards, add our numbers to your phone and just stay connected because man, we, we, we still love y'all and we still need y'all as a voice and encouragements in our lives so we can continue to do the calling that God has called us to. Well, normally we have to take up a missions offering to help missionaries, right? But you guys have invested in Kingdom Builders, and it's our honor today to present you guys a check from Kingdom Builders uh, before we pray a commissioning over you. So, Pastor John? Awesome, awesome. So, it, it is fun. On behalf of Kingdom Builders and Pastor Tom, you know that, the, that what we're doing to present you a little... Uh, get across the finish line really uh, fast type moment. Already funded, and this is just kind of an additional blessing to you to launch you into the next season. Somebody asked me in between services, now we support Josh and Alina monthly, right? And I was like, absolutely, yes. So this is in addition to that, and because of the generosity through Kingdom Builders, we can do that. And so I'm so amazingly proud of you guys. And uh, we have a lot of missionary families here at Calvary, but uh, you guys are really special to us, to, to Kim and I. Kim, I'm going to ask you to join me. We're going to pray, and uh, Pastor Tom's going to lead us. Church, would you stand? I know you've been up and down all, all day. That's all right. Would you just reach your hand uh, towards this couple? Pastor Tom, lead us in prayer as they go. Lord, we know that you call and that you anoint, Lord, but we commission in the name of Jesus. Josh and Elena, and I pray, Father, everything that they have ever been through, Lord, that you will redeem and you will utilize it on the mission field. And, and Lord, some of these kids that they're going to be ministering to are from broken homes and, and Lord, at risk of gang violence and drugs and everything, oh God. And I pray, Father, that you would just give them words of wisdom and life experiences speak into these kids' lives and to help disciple children, Lord, into adults and to follow you and to make a difference in Costa Rica and wherever you lead them, Lord, in the days ahead. We pray blessing and anointing and power, Lord. Fill them with your spirit. Protect them and, and guide them now in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Jesus. Would you just bless them and, and with an applause. Please stop by their table on the way out today. Proud of you, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, wow. What a fun day. I'm just so excited to be uh, able to do this with you guys. You are such a fun family. Um, th these are part of our family, and they're going to be serving Jesus in a different area of the world, and that's okay. They're still a part of our family. We're going to send them out, and that's, that's, that's great and incredible. One of the other opportunities that we have today is to welcome new members that are going to be serving Jesus here in, in our church here in Calvary. And so that's an exciting time as well, right? You said, man, this is a full, full, uh, um, just uh, what God is doing. He already, like, spiritually added people into the family just a few moments ago that prayed that prayer to accept Jesus. And, and we just gained some brothers and sisters there in, in our family. And now we get an opportunity to recognize a few of our families that um, have gone through welcome home class and different things there. And um, we just want to say welcome home. It's kind of our way of doing this. So if you're here today, we, we mentioned names in the early service. But we want to pray for you today if you're in the room. So if I read your name, these are the new members. And we'll wait till the end. Then we'll clap for them and pray together with them. But would you stand if you're here so we can put name with face. Just stay standing where you're at. And uh, we want to pray for you. New members here into Calvary. Catherine Del Conte. Catherine Del Conte. Thank you, Catherine. Rick O'Reilly. Rick O'Reilly. Thank you, Rick. Joy Riego. Joy Riego. Okay. Brian and Tori Shaw. Craig and Suzanne Shoemaker and Shayla Simpson. 
All right, Shayla, I think it's in that early first service there. Anyway, would you do me a favor? If you're standing around these and you feel comfortable, would you just put a hand on their shoulder? If you're not, just reach a hand towards them. Let's pray for these new members. Father, I pray for these men and women that are coming into this family. God, I pray that you would bless and anoint their families and their kiddos and their houses. God, I pray that as they've joined their hearts with ours, that you would just infuse their, their lives with your spirit and power in such an incredible way that, God, you, you would just receive all the glory for what you're doing through their lives. We thank you that they have made this decision to join hearts with us as we reflect your grace into this community. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Calvary, would you welcome these new members into our family? God bless you all. God bless you all. Well, one more thing before we go into Acts chapter 5. It's not just a small thing either. Make sure that you're here this Wednesday night. It's going to be an incredible night of praying over families as we go back into schools. Many of you have already kind of launched your kiddos back into school. I've seen moms uh, walking around with a little bit of bounce in their step, right? And it's like... They're gone, right? Yes, for, for a while. Uh, but uh, we just want to pray together with families. You say, well, I don't have kids in school anymore, so I don't have to come this Friday. No, you're missing it. Because those moms and dads that have kiddos in school, they need to understand, just as we've kind of wrapped our hands and arms around these new members, we want to do the same things for families in our church. We say, hey, you've got some spiritual mamas and daddies and some spiritual aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas that are praying for these families. So Wednesday night, we're going to have a time of prayer and worship and just kind of a focused prayer time in that. And if there wasn't enough reason in that to come on Wednesday night and uh, uh, just be a part of that, we've also uh, kind of sweetened the pot a little bit because we know school nights are crazy and you try to feed people before you and all that. So we're just going to feed you too. And if you're here starting at 6 o'clock in the East Auditorium, this is a blessing of the Lord right here that we're just going to say, hey, we have 200, not 201, 200 Chick-fil-A sandwiches ready for you to go um, and other stuff to go with them, obviously, to, to feed you um, on Wednesday. Moms and dads that have kids, you just want to be here, you know, be, be here because it's first come, first serve and, and all that. And uh, I promise you, we kind of had fun with this this morning and uh, just know that it's it's first come, first serve. So, yeah, I'm looking for who I can pick on. And uh, you guys are so nice. I don't want to pick on it. Pastor Tom, if you're here late and it's 200 gone, tough, dude. There's no more Chick-fil-A. You can't do that or whatever. So we've only got those. And uh, we'll just uh, have a great time. <laughs> I, I didn't... I. The, you guys are so nice sitting down front. In the early service, there was someone giving me the stink eye that I picked on him a little bit. No, I'm teasing. Uh, we'll have fun on Wednesday night. Nursery's available for newborns to three years of age, and uh, we're going to wrap up by 8.15, so we understand bedtimes, all right? It's going to be a fun night. Ashley, thank you. You've stayed with me for so long, and I know you're tired, so yeah, we're ready. So let's keep going. Hey, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, we're going to uh, go into God's Word. I recognize the time, and some of you, I understand, I've been where you're at. You look at that watch, and you go, oh my goodness, he's just now starting. We're going to be here forever. No, we're not. We understood we had a lot to do, and so we've got uh, some, some very practical, bam, focused opportunities for us to see what God's speaking to us through his Word, and uh, it's going to be a fun day. And for, for the, you're wondering why we're wearing the shirt, small groups are a big deal. It's because, first of all, it's true. And second of all, today is one of those days where we focus on launch of some different and new ministries here in the church, some of it that has been going on during the summer, but we just realize that God's word is true and that sometimes the methodology changes and things happen differently, but the message stays the same. People are transformed and lives are changed in different ways. And you're a part of a family here that really we, we actually like each other and we wanna do life together. And small groups really are a big deal they're a big deal. And so it's an exciting weekend. We've, I can't even tell you about all the stuff that was happening this past weekend. And here at the church, it was awesome day yesterday in the ministry of what God was doing. But today we want to see, okay, that's great. Awesome. Pastor John, small groups are a big deal. Yeah, that sounds fun. Cool shirt. Uh, shameless plug. There's shirts in the back. If you want them, they're five bucks. It's yeah, just whatever. So go buy you a shirt and there'll just be a walking billboard all over the triad here of what God's doing here at Calvary. 
So small groups are a big deal. But it's not just a thing that we've dreamed up and said, dreamt up and said, hey, you know, that, that would be a fun thing to do. No, it's actually in the Bible. And if you're visiting with us today, we kind of make it a habit of looking at the Bible and saying, hey, what does God's word teach and how do we live that out in our lives? That's kind of how we, we base everything that we do. And that's an incredible opportunity. So today is no different. Acts chapter 5 and verses 12 through 16, if you've got it on your device or your print copy or whatever, however you read the Bible, just that's where we're going to be today in this, in this word. So if you weren't with us last week, it was a tough word. Go back and, and either watch it online or read in the scripture. We talked about this, this idea, or the, not this idea, but this thing that happened in this early church where these, this couple, a husband and wife, came to the church and they misrepresented who they were to the church. We talked about this real kind of heavy, dirty word, right? Hypocrisy. And boy, we kind of all, yeah, we had steel-toed boots that we were passing out on the way in. So nobody got their toes stepped on a little bit. But it was, it was a tough word. And we saw in that that there was a really negative event that happened in the church. In fact, someone dropped dead in church. And you say, wow, what kind of church did I walk in? No, no, nobody's dropping dead here today or whatever. But it was a heavy word. And so now we're looking, okay, what was the impact of these things that we're talking about as far as the story continuing in us in Acts chapter 5? So verse 12, it says this. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. If you're taking notes and you have it in your Bible or whatever, circle this phrase right here, the apostles. We're going to go to that here in just a minute. It says this, and all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. Understand, short amount of verses today, but a lot of power in this. What is this saying? Hey, they were going to church. Kudos to you. You've, you've applied the first principle of Scripture here today. You're here. And not just those of you that are in the building physically, but those of you that are online as well. Thank you. You're going to church, right? You're there. You are in the, the, the presence of God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, that he's there. So awesome. You did great. We're not going to stop there, however. So people are going to church. Things are in the temple. They're awesome. And yet then here comes the, the kind of like throwing the emergency brake on on the momentum of this story. Verse 13, no one else dared to join them. Well, that's just really encouraging, Pastor John. Way to go. That's incredible. Yep, that's, that's just awesome. Well, let's not just read this and go over this. Do you understand the, the, the uh, last week we talked about this, and I mentioned it just a moment ago, that can you blame them? Like literally put yourself in that position where you're seeing this moment, the, this momentum of, of movement, a bunch of people that are gathering at the temple and things are happening. And a few days earlier, this couple, hey, my buddy Ananias, that we went to Jake's Diner every week together and we had omelets together, right? We hung out, whatever. And he went to that church and did, you know, and he like gave an offering. And I thought that's a great deal. And somehow, some way, dude dropped dead right then. And then like a few minutes later, you got to say, and Pastor John, what do you go? Go read. This is in the book, right? And a few minutes later, his wife comes in and misrepresents and, and lies. The Bible says he, she lied. He, they both lied to the Holy Spirit and they dropped dead. Can you blame people for not wanting to join that church, right? The church growth seminar one on one. You just have a couple people that die at the altar. And let me tell you what, I promise you, attendance is going to suffer the next day, right? I may not be there the next day. You're like, <laughs> I've got something, whatever. And there, so there's, no, there's, there's some, some reasoning there. Couple that with the fact that they've seen the apostles and different people been thrown in and out of jail, persecuted by these high priests who just months prior, they had saw this man that they called the rabbi, the teacher, the Messiah. They saw him stand in front of these same leaders and his, his fate didn't end up real well either. He ended up on a cross and like that. So all of this stuff is happening in the church and, and yet God is still doing great things. We saw that the, the, disciples, the believers there were joining together at the church, and yet no one else dared to join them, even though they had high regard for them. Well, goodness, understatement of the year. Like, whoa, high regard. Yeah, but I don't want any part of that. 
And someone else died last week at that church. You know, that kind of deal. So there was this real tension back and forth of we see God moving in this way and people are going to the temple and yet no one else dares to join them. And the, the, the smart thinker would say then, wait a second, Pastor John, if you're saying this story continued, this looks like the death nail, like pun intended, right? This looks like the thing that would stop the church. And yet we see throughout the book of Acts and we experience it here today that this story, it continues. And so if you're a smart thinker in this room or if you're not, just let me help you with that a little bit and say, how did that take place? Why didn't it end there? Well, let's go on, let's read. So the Bible says in verse 14, yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. No one else dares to join yet, however, in spite of whatever, more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women, verse 15 says, as a result of the apostles' work, get that again, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Have fun with this a little bit. When I read this, I just have to think that there was probably a building committee somewhere meeting that were going, wait a second, no, 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 no. Hey, Peter, you and your little shadow ministry over here, no, 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 that ain't working. They gotta come to the temple. They gotta get in there. No, that, that methodology, that whole shadow thing, that just blows my mind. I don't understand that. That's, no, they gotta come, Solomon's calling, they got to come here. And yet somehow, some way in the middle of this, this kind of fleshing out the way God was moving and acting, these different methodologies were, were birthed onto the scene. And guess what? People were, were still healed. They were still changed. They were still set free. They were still transformed. Why? Because the methodologies changed and yet God still worked. They were brought out into the streets. They didn't come to the church wait a second. Yet the story continues. Verse 16, crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and nothing happened. No, and they were all healed. I've grown up in church all of my life. I'm a church kid, right? I am, I am in, like I love the church. And these types of scriptures, when I wrestle with them, they cause me tension because I'm like, God, I've got the way that I feel comfortable with. I feel familiar in this. And man, and I gotta be honest, as your pastor, look around. If you see an empty seat beside you, flesh talking right here. I want those seats filled. It's not I, it's God. I just believe there's something about the experience, the community. I get it. But, but the truth of it is, is that God may be saying to you, why don't you take this out into the streets and let Sunday morning experience be the time where God can deposit into you what he needs for you to have and then go be the church. Go be the church. Go have people in the streets coming up to you at, at Target, at Chick-fil-A, at Walmart, or wherever, at Jake's Diner, right? That's the place. Where, and then just say, hey, you know what? Let me talk to you about Jesus. That's what happened here. The story continues in us. So how does this play out in our lives? Two key takeaways from this scripture that I, if you're taking notes, here it is. Here's the message in a nutshell. And if you do these two things and we kind of apply these, we got it. Number one, ministry shifted from Peter and John. If you read through Acts 1 through 4, you see it all the time. It said Peter did this. Peter spoke up in this and John and it's Peter and John. And now all of a sudden in Acts chapter 5, we are going to begin to see this phrase, the apostles, their work, all of the believers. And so there was this ministry shift of personality driven. Now it's to the body. It's to, it's to, to us. It's to you and I understanding this. Ministry shifted. And number two, methods changed. The believers all met in the temple and no one else dared to join them. That messes with our um, practice. That messes with our mentality. Does that mean we're giving everybody a, a pass to say, hey, don't come to church? No, no, no. Scripture teaches, forsake not the assembly together yourselves, that God's word is, is we, we grow best together in community. But boy, let us not get sucked into the mentality of saying, well, you gotta come to church for you to get saved. You know, whatever. You gotta come to church to meet Jesus. You know what? Jesus is in, in, in Walmart. <laughs> Jesus is out on the, the side of the road when that person has a flat tire and you stop and help them. That's, that's not the way I'm used to it. Well, that, okay, 
Next topic, you know, the Bible is, is pretty clear here. No one dared to join him. So methods changed, but people were still transformed and followed Jesus. So how does this play into our lives here at Calvary Church? Well, small groups, they're a big deal. This is a methodology, a thing, a practical, for some of you that are new, like, like preaching point is kind of done here, but the application now gets the rest of our time. And so one of our small, our, our small groups pastor, Pastor Scott Trury, is gonna come join me. And uh, while he gets his uh, stool up here and kind of help me with this, uh, you guys give Pastor Scott a hand as he comes on up here. It'd be great. So... We have fun together, and uh, we're, yesterday was awesome. Pastor Scott, we had a good time. A great day. Yep. It, it was good, and to some of you that were here yesterday, a lot of people that were here, you're wearing the shirts already, and uh, if, man, if you weren't here yesterday, you missed it. It was, be there next time we do a small group leaders training. It's great. Um, Pastor Scott, we talked about some of this yesterday, and so today, Sunday morning, we don't real, usually do this format, but it's a little bit practical. But one of the things we hit on yesterday was in this scripture, the story continuing, the, the method of small groups, methods change, message doesn't. Um, but yet the, the, the vision and mission, you, you gotta have those as anchors, like those don't change. So how do small groups, this idea of, of different types of ministry, how do they fit? This is a question we answered yesterday, but talk to us about kind of mission and vision of Calvary Church, how do small groups fit? Okay. Well, as you know, the mission of Calvary, the mission of every church, what it should be is the great commission, the great commandment. Of course, the great commandment is to love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. The great commission is go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples. That is the definition, a great tool to do that is small groups. It absolutely fits hand in glove with what God is called to do. Aren't you guys blessed we have such an amazing pastor and Pastor John, let's give him a hand, yeah. He's like, oh brother, really? Yeah. Here comes the butt. No, we're getting ready to do a wave. That's what was getting ready to happen, yeah. Uh, but we all show up, we all show up and we can say, you go pastor, but that's not what the Bible has called us to do. Acts continuing us, the story continuing us is, we're supposed to be the ministers. We've got a great man of God, but we're called to be equipped. We're called to be reaching our circles because we have people in our lives that Pastor John may never meet, but God has placed that deposit in us. And the way that's discovered, the way that's developed, the way that's pulled out of us is to be in small groups where people can challenge us and say, hey, what does this look like? What does serving God look like in your life? So it, you, you said it a minute ago, mission, this could be applied to any church. That, that believes the gospel, right? That that's the mission that, that God has released the Big C Church. When I say that, I mean basically the church worldwide, right? Not just Calvary Church, that his church, his kingdom, his bride, this is for everybody. But for us here personally, we kind of personalize how, the, how does that live out at Calvary in vision? So talk to us about that and where small groups fit. And you've got a, you've got a great illustration that, with this that we'll, we'll get ready to hear here in a moment. But the three areas are we want to create communities here at Calvary where people are going to experience God, where they're going to follow Jesus, and where they're going to serve others. We feel like those are the three components, parts, not totality, right. but that's part of the core of what a strong believer looks like. And so small groups help us to do that because it doesn't matter whether we, we are in a mountain biking group or in a group that is studying the life of the Spirit. Both of those can help us experience God because where two or more of us are gathered, he's there, correct? And so we need to open up our minds. We need to expand our mentality that experiencing God doesn't take place in this building. It does take place in this building, but it should be taking place on the streets it's as it was things. taken. Exactly. Yeah. Where, where the apostles were just walking down the streets, that should be our experience as well. And so you got to experience God. You got to follow Jesus. Sometimes we just need each other to encourage each other. Sometimes we need to get around people who just, you know people like that who just get you closer to God but just by being around them. We need to be that iron sharpening iron. We need to be that encouragement to each other. And the final area is serve others. To me, that's just a natural outflow when God is working in my life. My, my perspective widens. I get off of myself and I can look around and say, you know what, hey, 
There's a single mom that needs my help. Hey, there's a widow that needs my help. Hey, there's a young couple that is struggling because they can't make ends meet and they get, they're in that no sleep stage. God, how can I minister to them? And that's sort of ways that that can flow so, out. So we talked about it even in our staff meeting one day about what is a healthy family member, what is a healthy um, individual in Calvary uh, with our verbiage, so to speak, what does that look like? What's the target that we're aiming at? Moms and dads, I want to give you a tool right now, possibly, to do a little um, evaluation or assessment on your family. Right now, dads especially, be the spiritual leader of your house right now and say, hey, maybe take this idea and it transforms our lunch conversation here in just a few minutes, right? Um, that if this is a bullseye, if we're trying to hit a target and we, we bought in, we're like, yeah, you know, go God in what God's doing here at Calvary, then these three areas, experience God, follow Jesus, and serve others, those aren't just cute little words that find themselves on a poster in a conference room somewhere, okay? You guys you know that? You go to work and you see the inspirational thing of the sunset and it says teamwork, whatever. Nah, I get it. You know, don't, don't just stay there, but say, how does this apply in our family? in my life individually. Experience God, follow Jesus, That's and serve others. So if you see this as kind of a, a target, now let me put some um, uh, more practical terms or disciplines that may apply to each of these. These are not comprehensive, and I'll kind of, they'll zoom the cameras in here and just, there we go, but um, on the, the different areas there. So not comprehensive, but we think this is a pretty good um, example of what this may look like experience God, we think, and I think scripture, te- I don't think, I know scripture teaches this, forsake not the assemblies of yourself, be, you know, where two or three are gathered, he's there. Experience God. One of the best ways you can experience God is when you come together corporately in worship. Acts chapter five, we just read it, that the believers met together in the temple. They were there. That's important. You experience God in a powerful way, even this morning in just our, our corporate singing and worship. A healthy disciple, a follower of Jesus, we believe, and I believe Scripture teaches this, that you experience God and you do not um, a, a, avoid corporate worship. And in our Western thought, go to church, be, be in church. Like that does, that's not the end all, like that's not it, but just that, that's important. You can experience God in that, that place. Now, let me step on your toes a little bit, especially those of you that are in this room. And I'm gonna just put myself right there along with you. Um, to say, right now, there is two um, um, expressions of corporate worship and, and, and the body of Calvary Church taking place right now. Look around the room, and it's those of us in the room, right? We are a part of Calvary Church, and we are in, involved in experiencing God corporate worship. Some of you have never kind of swiveled your head and turned back and looked at the cameras, and this is, I'm gonna invite you to do that right now. Right now, there's a camera right there with a red light on the top of it, and I know that's the live camera. That's the one that's showing broadcast, and on the other side of that screen, I'm also talking to some other pe- uh, people that are members of Calvary Church too, and they're experiencing God and worshiping together in corporate worship, and we sometimes can, because you know, out of sight, out of mind, We can think, well, how in the world can someone experience God and not be physically in the room? Let me just tell you this. I don't know, but God does it all over the place. In fact, I know so much so because I know there's a group of of believers in places in this world that cannot meet together corporately because they get thrown in jail and the government won't allow them. And they join online with people all over the planet. And the Spirit of God, in the the only way the Spirit knows how, can move and meet in places. And the Spirit of God is not confined to the the building that we find ourselves here. And so many times we get ourselves kind of wrapped up into this, oh, we're the church. I'm telling you, the church is larger than you even know about. That's why we've brought Pastor Philip and Ashley on staff here to be our online campus pastors because every week about 200 or right around 200 people are on the other side of that red light on that camera joining together with us worshiping God in their different environments and I'm here to say welcome home you're a part of the family and I'm so glad that you're worshiping Jesus with us today and I can tell you this ah that makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't know like ah it's just not the same And that's okay. Because when I read the book of Acts, 
verse 12, it said they gathered together in the temple and yet some people didn't even dare to join him. I don't know the reasons, but I know this, that when they met him out in the streets, God healed them. And that sometimes, Pastor Scott, it makes us feel uncomfortable. We're kind of like we, we, you're church brats. Like we're church kids, right? Like we, you, go, you go to church, by golly. I fell know. asleep underneath the chairs when I was a little one. There yeah. you go. Like you drooled on Literally the grew up. Exactly. The place, I was probably you? chewing on those chairs too. Exactly. <laughs> And yet, can you understand what I'm trying to get you to understand? Methodologies change. Right. This is really important. Don't skip church. Be here. Because there's something that happens in corporate worship. You experience God in a different way. Can you experience God by yourself? Yes. Yes. There's something different, though, about experiencing God and, and having a corporate worship environment. Quite honestly, can I just be truthful to you? And not that I'm not always, hopefully, but, but just my flesh. There are sometimes I come to church and I'm tired. And your expression of praise and worship and graciousness and gratefulness and smile and energy, guess what it does? It helps me. It helps me. Because I need you. And you need me. And we need each other. Corporate worship's really important. Don't, don't, don't betray that. So follow Jesus. We gotta hurry. Um, follow Jesus. Small groups. We're all in. What does a small group look like? Well, Let's dream together. It can look like a lot of different things. It can be a classroom. It could be a, a, an interest group where, in fact, uh, talk to somebody this morning and they've talked to you about starting a pickleball small group. And it, that's going to happen. Like he, uh, Jim talked to me uh, earlier about, you know, we're going to do pickleball and we're going to share a devotion at the end. And we're going to talk about what the message was at the end. I'm like, bam, small group ministry right there. Because there are people that will say, hey, I'll come play pickleball with you, but would never set foot in the service at 9 or 11. I say, Pastor John, that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, it does me too, kind of a little bit. But when I read God's word, no one dared to join them. And they were still healed on the streets. It challenges me. So follow Jesus, small group, serve others. Um, we think a great opportunity is, is some of the 336 opportunities, serve 336 that we have, different serve opportunities all over. The backpacks that we've packed there for moms and dads that don't, you know, can't afford to buy stuff for their kiddos. Uh, Pastor Tom, are there still backpacks in the back there or are they gone? There's about 20 or so. So if you still, that side note, whatever, see Pastor Tom there, we can get those to you. Uh, but that's what that is about. So here's why we're saying this target. And I know the time. Um, so here's why the target is important. As a mom or a dad, how are you doing? What's the health of, of your family? of you as an individual. Take a temperature today. This is a great opportunity, not just corporately, but us individually in how we look at ourselves. So we said this yesterday, this is really big. Think big, the vision and mission, you've heard Pastor Scott talk about it. It's the same for every church. The great commandment and the great commission. Think big, start small, small groups, find your people and then go deep. Life transformation will take place, I promise you it'll be incredible. So Pastor Scott, what is a, a successful, that's hard to say, a successful small group look like? And talk about kind of the content versus community, that whole thing. Okay. A successful small group has multiple facets to it. The key is it brings people together and iron sharpens iron. God in me challenges you. God in you challenges me. People that don't, would, won't dare set foot in this building will be engaged with us. And so that, that is as broad as the Holy Spirit can dream, correct? It can be a, a, a Bible study or it can be a fantasy football group. It can be a, a study that is going precept by precept or it can be a group that, that meets on a golf course. As long as he is the center of it all. And I think that is the key so whether, no matter what the content is, I'm going to bring Jesus wherever I go. How about you? Yeah. And so no matter whether you're in a workplace or at a coffee shop or whether you're in somebody's home or living room, whether you're just walking down the street together, the content isn't as important as the connection. Because the world needs real people. They, they need something authentic. They need you and Jesus flowing, the Holy Spirit flowing through you to where you can 
get permission to speak into their lives. How do you do that? You do that by rubbing shoulders, walking with them to where, oh, you're not a weird Christian. There's something real about you. So when their marriage is in trouble, they're calling you. When their finances are a mess or when they don't have an answer or, or they need God to move in an area of health and healing, you're the person they think about. So, and so Pastor Scott, we talked about this, and, and one of the questions that pops up when you hear pastoral staff say content's not important, please understand, content is hugely important. But what we're saying to you is that we'll provide that. We've got some opportunities here that we've got the resources here. We don't want you to have a barrier that says, oh, I could never be a preacher. I could never do this. I, I don't feel equipped to lead a small group because I can't preach or I can't. Well, eh, don't, don't worry about that. We'll give you the tools. In fact, we'll tell you in a minute about Bible Engagement Project, a resource that's just plug and play. Boom, go. You be concerned with the community and the, con the connection piece and the content. We've actually got you covered on that. So that's really cool. So don't, don't think that, oh, man, they're getting you know, squirrely in their doctrine and theology. No, no, no. We just don't want that to be a barrier for you to never be involved in the small group. So just understand that's why we, we say that there. In fact, check this out. What does a successful small group look like? It looks like that right there. No, you say, oh, I got to put on a boa and walk through it. No, no. This is a middle school gir girls group that Brenda Settles leads leads and it's just an incredible ministry to to young junior high girls that just do life together and you know what they have in mama brenda is a spiritual mom that that they own moms and dads and get it i get it but there's this third voice right that that is also speaking into their lives and is there to be a friend to them they have fun so that that's what a successful small group looks like they have fun and do life together you know what another successful small group looks like it involves a bunch of moms that have young kids that have a different struggles and trials and things they walk through that nobody else really understands except other moms in those same spots. And so we've had even this past summer, a uh, little sister, not, not little, that sounded condescending, but they're large, healthy sisterhood groups out of Inspire Ministries that, that uh, Pastor Kim has been helping lead in this particular group. This is at Renee Hicks' house, Nina Day. Renee and, and Nina, you guys just are awesome. You guys are incredible small group leaders. Even yesterday, had a great group there and ministered to uh, Pastor Scott's wife, Carrie, was a speaker there. This is awesome. This is what a successful small group looks like. Keep going. Home Crafted. Uh, a small group, Pastor Philip and Ashley Lee. This is a, an event they went to. Took a bunch of people out to the Greensboro Grasshoppers game and had fun and did life together and talked about family and life and going back to school and different ministries. Pastor Kim and I went and sat and talked and met a new family that just moved into the area sitting at a baseball game. That's what a successful small group looks like. It provides community and connection where there's a foundation and the soil becomes fertile, then the seed of the gospel grows. That's awesome. That's what it looks like. Mighty Men, yesterday, had a meeting there with Mighty Men, Pastor, uh, just the different, uh, Pastor Larry, that's a prophetic word of Pastor Larry's, my, there, but, but God is, uh, God's using Larry Hagee in the ministry there, Mighty Men, just in different, even like small groups that are birthed out of that, that ministry there is, is incredible. God's doing some awesome things. Joyful noise. Uh, some of our, our uh, seniors in our ministries here at Calvary, that God's given them giftings and musical talents and going into retirement communities, just singing and blessing and serving others. That's what small group looks like. And you say, well, Pastor John, that's great, but that's easy for you to say and not do. No, Pastor Kim and I, this some, uh, next two weeks, September 11th, we're starting our own small group in our house. They're going to meet twice a month on Sunday afternoons, and it, we're calling it Pioneers. Why is that? Because there's four couples that we've invited to go on a journey with us to be in a small group together with us. These are couples that have a call of God on their lives, and they're going to be involved in ministry at some place in the next season of their lives. It's, it's a little bit non-traditional path that God's taken this on the, them on. Why do we call it Pioneers? Because there's a, there's a bunch of, of, of couples in this church that have a calling on their lives that are about to go places that traditional methods don't go. And we want to say, hey, that's all right. We want to partner together with you and say, go, be released. Go out into the streets and be able to, to be God's reflection of his grace into those areas. They're going to be pioneers. They're not going to be settling. And in a settlement, they're going to be pioneers. I'm so stinking excited about that, Pastor Scott. I want to start it like right now. But that's, that's how I'm in. Like I'm all in. I want to be involved, not only participating in, but leading a small group. And I'm telling you, it's the way God is going to use Calvary Church to think big, Start small and go deep. 
I said earlier about Bible Engagement Project and we're wrapping up. I promise you stay with me. Bible Engagement Project is a tool that God's given the church uh, here at Calvary that we, we're bought in. It's a free resource that you say, I want to lead a small group to be a part of. I don't know what to do in it. That's okay. It's great. We've got, it's a digital resource that you can have. It's a Bible study. It's a discussion guide that is so, so simple. We can show you that. Several of our groups even right now are going to be using Bible Engagement Project as the resource behind that. In fact, moms and dads, you say, I don't, I don't, I'm not in a small group that's going through Bible Engagement Project. Well, your kids are. We have a new uh, kids pastor that's coming in a couple weeks, and Pastor G and our student ministries department is going to be uh, in, in integrating some of the Bible Engagement Project tools and the resources there in small groups coming up. But in our kids ministry, it is going to be, it is the curriculum that our kids ministries are founded upon. Why is that significant? Because there's also a piece of it that's a family devotional that you are going to have as moms and dads that now automatically can transform that drive to soccer practice or that, that drive to school to where it stops you having the question that you ask your kids and you say, hey, what'd you learn about in church today? And what do they always say? Jesus, and that's all you get from them, right? And you're like, well, tell me more, you know, whatever. Now you've got a devotional piece that is corresponding to what they've learned in kids, kids ministry here. And you can say, hey, I know you talked about Abraham and Isaac today and, and that sacrifice. And, and boy, that was a tough you know, story to tell. And how do you, when's the last time you felt like God was telling you to do something risky? And now you're like, the kid's like, wait a second, are you stalking me? Like, how are you back here? You know, and so we just want to partner together with you as parents and say, hey, content is less important. We'll give you content. It's the community and connection, even within your own family. So, Pastor Scott, another question, we're not gonna spend time on it, but uh, we, we answered this yesterday. The truth is, God's word says that we need each other. Please don't leave today thinking, well, that's cool, that's great, but I just come to church on a Sunday and now that's it. You're missing out on, the, on being a, a fully committed, devoted disciple of Jesus, if I can be that bold. That's good. Because the Bible says we need each other. We do need each other, and he's given us the church to be a help in that. But beyond that, what do I do next? How do I get involved? I'm there. I'm all in. Like, I want to respond. I'm rushing to the altar and signing up for a small group, right? Pastor Scott, tell us how we respond. Well, as you came in today, the, uh, the greeters handed out a, a brochure for you. And that's got a, like one sentence description of, of some of our small groups that are available here. The key on that is a QR code that you literally can snap that with your phone and it'll take you to our new website where all those small groups are listed and you got a better description. When they meet, who's the leader, um, those kind of things. What are, the, what are the topics? What are the interests? Um, that is the easiest way to get plugged in. If you don't want to mess with that, just head to any of our, our welcome centers and, and, and talk to them about it. You can talk to me, of course, and uh, we just want you to get plugged in and uh, see you create community um, in no matter what circle that, that belongs in. So those are the quickest, easiest ways to jump in there. The reason why we've dedicated a lot of prime real estate in our time today on Sunday morning for this is because small groups are a big deal. Jesus himself in his ministry, whenever he was about to, to leave this earth, he pulled three into a little small group meeting in a garden. And he said, hey guys, would you just, would you just watch and pray for a little bit? I need, you to be, I need you to be my support. Boy, they failed, right? They, they, they weren't the best small group ever. But he was modeling to us something that's significant. And I'm gonna ask Pastor Clayton and the team's gonna come. We're gonna be concluded. Would you stand with me? He said, Pastor John, this is a little bit different service and we're gonna conclude differently. Yeah, we are. And in a moment, we're going to have the prayer team come forward. And the reason why we do that every week and have some sort of connection there is, is because we really believe that small groups, they don't just happen like on a, on a Thursday afternoon at Starbucks or whatever. Man, small groups and connections can happen even right here in an altar time. And some of you that raised your hand earlier to ask Jesus to come into your heart, I cannot emphasize this enough. In fact, if you were around somebody that you saw them raise their hand or whatever, would you do me a favor and would you, after we're dismissed here in just a minute, would you say, hey, I'll go pray with you and, and walk together with them. But, but if you've raised your hand, please do us the honor of, of letting us connect with you in, in prayer because 
there's, there's one thing to, to, to pray a prayer, and I believe that salvation and forgiveness is instant. It, it's like, that's it. It's done. It's God's letting you have a fresh start. But then walking that out, boy, you really need the, the body of Christ. You need each other. And so we would love to help do that. And so in a minute when we pray and dismiss that these people up here, we, that's all we're here for is just to connect with you. And that is a big deal as well. But I'm gonna encourage you, especially you dads that are in the room and if you're the, the, the leader, the spiritual lead of the house and whatever that looks like, moms or dads, why aren't you involved in a small group? It's a good question to ask. Well, I'm too busy. It's an interesting opportunity for us to respond, even though some of us have grown up in church possibly all our lives. And the the bullseye, we may be off balance because we do one of those really well. Like we are here every Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. There's a fullness of our, our serving and, and our, our living for Jesus that's so much more. God wants us to be fully involved in what he's doing. So would you let me pray for you? As we're praying, would the prayer team just come and join me at the front? I want to pray for you. And then Pastor Scott, I'm going to let you close this out. Prayer team, come ahead as I'm, I'm wrapping up here. I, I want us to be that point of connection. So Father, I pray right now for this room. God, help this word sink into our hearts. Help this word challenge us. God, I'm, I'm so aware that the message doesn't change. The methods do. And God, help us to be responsive to what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. Pastor Scott, bless him as we go today. Thank you guys for being here today. Let me pray a prayer blessing and if you want to come, if you uh, raise your hand to accept him, Jesus in your heart today, and you want to come talk to somebody about that, they're here for that as well. But let me pray a prayer blessing over you as you leave. Father, Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, that you've called us to be your own, that you called us into your very presence, Lord, that we are your children. That's the type of relationship you desire with us, that we look to you as Father God. And Lord, I pray for all those that are represented in this room, all those that are represented online that call Calvary home. Lord, I pray a prayer of blessing over them. Lord, that you would guide their hands this week. Lord, that you would expand our vision. Lord, that we would not be distracted with just our stuff. But Lord, you would give us your perspective of needs that are walking through our life every day and we don't see it. Help us to see. Help us to be a blessing to those around us. Father, I pray financial blessing on those in this house. Lord, I pray for favor in the workplace. Lord, I pray for divine appointments to speak to those who need a touch from you. And that deposit is within us. Flow through us, Holy Spirit. We give you permission this week. Lord, I pray your blessings upon your people in Jesus name and all God's people said amen see you guys Wednesday night our prayer uh, things are open here come join us